Learning how to use masks in After Effects is an essential part of any video editing workflow. There are a ton of ways that you can get really creative and create stunning visual effects by using masks. Let's take a look. Masking is the process of hiding or revealing parts of an image or video. A mask allows you to control the visibility of a specific part of a layer. Here I have a composition and I've placed a still image into my composition. We'll just go ahead and make a dark purple solid and I'll make it the size of my comp. As you can see, the image is now obscured by the solid image. The shape tools in After Effects are not only used to create shapes, but we also use them to create masks. Now because we use the exact same tool to create shape layers and masks, how do we keep it all straight? Well, it really depends on what you have selected. If you have a layer selected and then you use the shape tools and draw on that layer, you will see that I've now created a mask. On my solid layer, I now have a new category called mask. The mask allows me to reveal what's on the underlying layer by default. If we come to the mask property and we click inverted, it's going to invert the results where the mask will become a window to the underlying layer. So you can actually use a mask to only show a portion of a specific layer, or you can use it to create a hole within that particular layer, depending on which option you choose. In addition, we can also add multiple masks to the same layer. With the dark purple solid layer selected, I'm going to come up to my shape tool and I'll use Q to select my circle tool. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. As you can see, the circle is actually taking a bite out of the existing square mask that we have. Right now, both of our masks are set to add. If we go ahead and click inverted on the circle mask, you will see that they both become inverted and the result is going to be the overlapping area. I'm going to turn inverted off, which is going to show both of our mask shapes. If we change mask two to have a mode of subtract, you will see that it is going to subtract the mask to the circle shape from the square mask. If you're going to have a bunch of masks on your page, it is easier if you name your masks. And just like when we name layers, to name a mask, you'll click on the mask name, you'll hit return or enter, and then we're just gonna call this mask circle, and we'll call the first one mask square. If we move on to intersect, intersect is going to give us the intersecting area of the two masks. We'll be looking at lighten and darken in a little bit. Finally, we have difference. Difference is going to leave the masks showing on the layer in which they exist and any overlapping area is going to show as a whole through the masks. If you want to move a mask, you're going to need to use your selection tool. If you click on the edge of the mask, you will be accessing the bezier points and handles. So you'll be actually modifying the mask shape. If you want to move the mask, you're going to need to double click on the edge of the mask so that you see a bounding box appear around the mask shape. At this point, you can grab the mask and you can reposition it to a different location. If you don't see the bounding box show, you'll want to make sure that the toggle mask and shape path visibility is selected. If this is not selected, if you try to click and select your masks, you will not see any outline around the masks. I'm going to go ahead and place the circle mask next to the square mask. If we open up the mask itself, we have a mask properties that we can keyframe. The mask path is a way in which we can augment and keyframe the shape of the mask. If I turn on keyframing for mask path at frame one and move my playback head out to one second and make some sort of alterations to the circular shape, I'm going to click on the mask path so that I can access the anchor points and the handles, and I'll just manipulate the shape in a subtle way. 
Now if we rewind and play, you're going to see that the mask is going to morph into that new shape. I'll select my ending keyframe and I'll copy it and place it at the end of my animation. In this way, the mask is going to morph and come back to its original shape. In addition to being able to augment the mask path, we also have the ability to control the feather of the mask. The feather of the mask is going to control the softness around the edges of the mask. And again, this is something you can keyframe. We also can control the opacity of the mask so they don't have to be completely opaque. They can be actually all the way down to being invisible. So again, this is something you can keyframe. And finally, mask expansion is a way that you can increase the size of the mask or decrease the size of the mask. Let's go ahead and turn the feather off so you can see. Negative numbers on expansion will shrink the mask. Positive numbers is going to increase it. We have lots of options in regards to masks. Let me show you how we can use masks to create some animation. I'm going to go ahead and delete the circle mask. Now I'm left with my mask square. I'm going to double click on the edge of the mask so that I can select the mask and change the size of it. I'm going to make it have the exact same height and width initially of our composition. I'm going to open up the mask. I'll turn on keyframing for the mask path and I'll move the playback head out to one second. Now I'm going to come to the mask. We'll double click and then we're just going to simply move the mask all the way over to the left edge. This will create a reveal so the mask is going to slide out of the way and reveal the underlying layer. In addition to animating these features, I'm going to add some feather and then I'm going to increase the mask expansion. This will just simply add a soft edge. So once again, if we rewind and play our animation, you can see that the difference is subtle, but the edge of the mask is going to be softer and not so hard edged. Using masks, you can go ahead and get quite creative with transitions, among other things. Now let's take a look at the other two mask modes. In order to show you how these work, I've gone ahead and created a couple of compositions to demonstrate this. I'll open Mask 2. In this particular composition, I have the abstract background, and then I have the dark purple solid. I've created three circular masks, and if we open up all of these masks, you will see that the only changes that I've made is that Mask 1, which is right here, has 80% opacity. Mask 2, which is this one, has 60% opacity. And Mask 3, which is the bottom one, has 40% opacity. As you can see, when we look at the areas that overlap, we will get varying degrees of opacity because it's adding the opacities together. So since this one is 80 and this one's 40, it's blending those opacity settings together to give us something that works a little bit differently. So all of the areas that are going to overlap are going to have varying degrees of blended opacities. If we change the mask mode from add to lighten, you will see that the blends in between these is now not going to be additive, but it's going to just keep the original opacity states and wherever they overlap, it'll just take on the darker masks opacity settings. This is probably not something that you're going to use quite often, but I just wanted to show you so you know what it does. In the mask three composition, I have something that's set up similarly. I have two masks and each mask has opacity of 50%. So you can see where they overlap, there is going to be a additive effect in those amounts of opacity. It's basically creating about a 75% opacity in this overlapped area. If we change the mode from add to darken on both of the masks, you will now see that it acts more like an intersection where the original shape of the masks is going to disappear and the only thing left is going to be that overlapped area. Again, you probably won't get much mileage out of these two settings, but I did want to explain what they do. 
you definitely will find a ton of creative ways in which to use masks, and we'll explore some more things that we can do with masks in some of our upcoming lessons.